The situation is urgent, so I'll get straight to the point. Kachina is undoubtedly a hero of Natlan, and I'm deeply sorry this happened to her. There's been unrest in the Night Kingdom, but I don't know what's causing it. As a result, I've been unable to track down her location. Until we find and address the cause of the unrest, the Ode of Resurrection will continue to be ineffective. And that means Kachina won't be able to come back? That's correct. Not until the problem with the Night Kingdom is resolved. How long will that take? It's hard to say. Kachina always dreamed of fighting the Abyss. Of doing her part to defend Natlan. She wasn't afraid of death because she knew, if it came down to it, the Pyro Archon would be there to bring her back to life. Whenever we sat down together, exhausted from training, she would always hum the Ode of Resurrection. She was supposed to come back to us. We were supposed to hug her and celebrate with her and share her joy. We supported her every step of the way, but what are we supposed to do now? Sit peacefully and wait for her return? Lose ourselves in grief over her death? Tell me, are we her friends or her murderers? That's not fair, Mulani. It's all right. I understand your rage and your grief. Kachina's life means a great deal to me, Mualani. Believe me, I want to bring her back as soon as possible. I would give you that peace of mind if I could. But please, hear what I have to say so I can at least give you a broader picture of the issue we are now facing. Considering the recent attack on your tribe, I believe the Abyss has found a new means of undermining the rules of our nation. You mean... The Sacred Flame. The foundation of our resistance against the Abyss. If we continue to hold the pilgrimage and send teams to fight the Abyss, there will likely be more casualties. But if we stop altogether, the Sacred Flame will only grow weaker. The Abyss will scale up their attacks, and the tragedy we saw with the people of the Springs will only be the first of many. If we compare the two choices, the former seems to be the lesser of two evils. <sighs> Sorry, I know that may sound harsh, but I bear the name Malipo. Weighing the costs is my duty. The raw truth can be cruel. But we need to understand it if we want to approach this rationally. But what would you say, Mualani? This is personal for you. And unlike Kanich, I dare say it's not a simple case of weighing up which course of action is less painful, is it? No. I can't choose between them, and I don't want to. Saying that one is preferable over the other is disrespectful to the people who suffered. Hmm. You're saying it doesn't matter whether I suspend the pilgrimage. The consequences will be equally painful. Yes. What happened to Kachina breaks my heart. But I couldn't bring myself to sacrifice other people for her sake. And that is the crux of the problem. It's not simply a matter of choosing the lesser of two evils. Either way, there will be people who suffer. And the end result will be the same. Belief in the pilgrimage will waver. Once doubt has crept in, the people will no longer unite in battle against the Abyss. And that is exactly what the Abyss wants. Their ultimate goal isn't to break the rules that make the Ode of Resurrection work. It's to destroy the people's faith in them. To prevent what happened to Kachina from happening to anyone else, we need to suspend the pilgrimage. So that is my current plan. And in the meantime, I've made efforts to strengthen each tribe's defenses. Then, we have to find another way of strengthening the Sacred Flame to keep the Abyss at bay. This won't be easy. I'll need time to figure out the best approach. I understand your anger, Mualani. But I hope that provided some clarity, at least. Wow. Hyman thought things were gonna get heated for a second, but the Pyro Archon took the time to explain everything so patiently. 
I owe you an apology, Archon. I let myself get carried away earlier, and I'm sorry. You're right. We need to focus on finding solutions. We could always hold the pilgrimage without sending a team to fight in the Night Warden Wars. That way, we would still be able to fuel the Sacred Flame. I've considered that, but the two events have nearly always been linked. Without the chance to fight the Abyss, pilgrimage rankings lose their prestige, and competitor numbers will drop. With fewer participants, the amount of contending fire produced will decrease, and the vicious cycle will continue indefinitely. So, essentially, the Abyss has taken Kachina hostage. You've learned about the concept of ley lines during your travels, yes? The Night Kingdom is something similar. Staying there for a short period of time shouldn't have an effect on the person. But with the Abyss in the picture, it's a different story. Your sense of self will be devoured until eventually you become one with the Sea of Souls. Imagine pouring a cup of water into a rushing river. You can try to scoop up another cup, but there's no chance it will be the same water you had before. I won't sugarcoat it. That is the danger Kachina is currently facing. Just like you said, Archon. Both of these problems need to be addressed. You can focus all your efforts on dealing with the Sacred Flame. I will go search for Kachina. The Abyss poses the same threat to you as it does to her. It is very possible you will not return. Knowing that, do you still choose to go? Kachina's waiting for us to rescue her. That's all that matters. I failed to protect her during our campaign. But I can make it up to her now. I choose to go as well. Um, Traveler? What do you think? Understood. Then I'll support you in any way I can. The Masters of the Nightwind have a technique that can extract an ancient name from the Ley Lines. If we can find Kachina's ancient name, I can use the link between them to pinpoint her position within the Night Kingdom. Then comes the hard part. You need to visit the Night Kingdom in person and rescue her. Can we even go there? Under normal circumstances, only the consciousness can enter. But there is a way to go there in person. However, know that the Night Kingdom will attempt to repel you, and the Abyss certainly won't leave you be. That's fine by me. Same here. Fighting the Abyss is nothing new for me. So, uh, Paimon's the only one who's scared? Well, if you're going, Traveler, Paimon's going too. Seat Lolly of the Masters of the Nightwind once created an artifact that can be used to communicate with the Wyab. We call it the Spirit Speaker Stone. It was originally used as a ceremonial artifact wielded by the tribal chiefs. But that spiritual quality also means it can be used to search for an ancient name. That was the artifact I delivered to the Scions of the Canopy a few days ago. Didn't think I'd be hearing about it again so soon. Thank you so much for your help, everyone. Your thanks are unnecessary. I will offer you whatever aid I can, but your fellowship and courage are what will truly decide the success of this operation. <laughs> Besides, you're the ones helping me. I can only focus on one thing at a time, after all. <sighs> Traveler, I... Certainly didn't expect our first conversation to be so serious. I've heard all about your accomplishments. Ever since you arrived, I've been hoping to meet you and offer you Natlin's highest level of hospitality. Um, why? Why? Is that not what happened in the other nations you visited? Yeah, things were pretty complicated at the start. And, you know, in the middle. But our reputation's solid nowadays. <laughs> That's more like it. After all, I've heard you're someone who transcends fate. Perhaps even more than you can imagine. But we can talk about that some other time. Ideally, this would be the perfect night for a drink and some musical ambiance. But there are important things to be done. Oh, I almost forgot. 
Mateo was wounded in the fight against the Abyss. She wanted us to give this to you. It embodies fond memories and my strength of will. That's what she asked us to tell you. She said you'd know what that means. <sighs> I didn't think this day would come so soon. The flames of her life force. I can feel them flowing within the talisman. <laughs> if things were different, the two of us could have enjoyed the hot springs together while she gave this to me in person. We're supposed to be hot spring buddies after all. But don't worry. This talisman means a great deal to me. I'll take good care of it. And once this is all over, I'll pay Atea a visit. You said you didn't want to jeopardize the production of Contending Fire. But that's not at all why you decided to suspend the pilgrimage, is it? You're right. Even now, the production of Contending Fire is far from sufficient. The gradual corrosion caused by the Abyss has resulted in a massive shortage of pyro energy. And we're currently at the breaking point, as things stand. The pilgrimage is a lost cause. Suspending it allows us to save our strength to defend the tribes. The Abyss has brought catastrophe to Natlan, and Kachina's disappearance in the Night Kingdom is a direct consequence of that. We can't let the general public know that. No. If the public learned that Natlan's destruction was close at hand, there would be immense panic. But if I said nothing at all, they would have continued to question the integrity of Natlan's heroes. Another simple choice. The latter was clearly the better solution. But you chose otherwise. I have never subscribed to the belief that the right choice is the one with the fewest sacrifices. Let's go. There's still a way for the Sacred Flame to last a little longer. You mean... Yes. Come with me. The Sacred Flame must never go out. Not only does it strike fear in the Abyss, but it's also the pillar of Natland's stability. So until our heroes are ready, I will sacrifice my power to keep it burning. But that can only last so long. I think we should focus on the remaining ancient name bearers. Don't let desperation cloud your judgment. Those chosen by the Wyab have already embarked on their destined path. It is for them to decide how that journey ends, not us. All we can do is support them. Even so, for you to make this sacrifice, it's not right. <laughs> if not me, then who? No other is capable of sustaining the sacred flame. I possess great strength, but I'm not above my people. This is part of my duty. Archon! It's the Fatui! The Archon of Natlan. A force to be reckoned with. The secret of the Ley Lines is no secret to me. Long have they been destined for ruin. <laughs> And since the oath made five centuries ago remains unfulfilled, what use is the Gnosis in your hands? I don't know what you mean. But it sounds like this is about more than the Tsaritsa. In times of crisis, someone must pick up the mantle of salvation. Your plan has reached an impasse, and now it falls to me to create new rules for Natlan. But before the dawn of a new age, the old must be destroyed. I assume that's the end of your speech? Good. People like us? Let our blades do the talking! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Masters of the Night Wind. Send word. The captain and his followers must be apprehended. Are you all right, Archon? He was a formidable opponent. Exactly what I would expect from the first of the Fatui Harbingers. I never imagined someone could match you in combat. If the Saritza sent him here, why would he bring up what happened five centuries ago? Yeah. And how much does he know about Natlan? The Harbingers are all driven by their own personal goals. The only purpose that unites them is collecting the Gnosis, but I'm sure the Captain has his own reasons for being here as well. Whatever his motive, we should shift our focus to the Fatui. If they attack again, and we're not prepared, we're done for. No. We're running out of time. The wound I inflicted should hold him back and weaken him for the time being. Besides, I'm sure you noticed. The power that came to his rescue just now came from the Masters of the Nightwind. In other words, there are traitors among us. Not necessarily. This could prove to be a very valuable turn of events. When we exchanged final blows, I sensed an unusual presence within him. I'll need to investigate further. Kanich. Go to the Masters of the Night Wind and look into who could have aided the Captain. Speak to Seat Lali. She should know. Of course. I'll head out right now. Do you still intend to... Yes. But fear not. Natlan's strength has never rested solely in its Archon. Together we foresaw the only path that leads to our nation's future. We must trust in that vision now. Is everything okay, Archon? Ah, uh, completely fine. Just lamenting the fact that I never got a picture when I could still turn my hair into flames. <laughs> ah, too late now. I just hope the others have a safe journey. like the Archon unleashed her power. She must be fighting a formidable opponent. Should we go back and check what's going on? Have faith in the Archon. She wouldn't lose in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. Once we find Kachina's ancient name, we'll head right back. Okay, let's just keep climbing. Emon really hopes nothing goes wrong. Chaska. Nice to see you again, Wyna. I'm afraid we don't have time for pleasantries, so I'll get right to it. We're here for the Spirit Speaker Stone. Whoa, hold on a second. At least tell me why you need it first. My friend Kachina is trapped within the Night Kingdom. We need the stone to find her ancient name and rescue her. Rescue her? From the Night Kingdom? That's right. I'm sorry, but someone needs to tell you what you don't want to hear. Going there, a mature warrior would never make such a foolish decision. The nature of battle is unpredictable. You never know how it's going to end. Losing a friend is tragic, but when that happens, the best thing you can do is focus on how to prevent further casualties. I appreciate what you're trying to say, Chief Wyna. But if the price of maturity is abandoning a friend in need, I'll choose foolishness any day. If Kachina's still holding on, then so will I. I thought you might say that. <sighs> is something wrong, Wyna? This doesn't seem like you. Life isn't complete without taking risks. 
That's always been your mantra. <laughs> it's nothing. The Night Kingdom is a dangerous place. Can't blame me for checking if you were up to the task. If you're that determined, far be it from me to stop you. Here's the stone. Keep it safe, okay? It's not like we have a spare. Thank you. Huh. Seems like you two go way back. But aren't you from the Flower Feather Clan, Chaska? Oh, Chaska's a peacekeeper. So she's famous throughout the tribes. She's always the one people call to resolve conflicts. So we slowly got to know each other that way. Her younger sister, Quichi's always hanging around our tribe, too. She's helped us out a lot in the past. Oh, you have a younger sister? Yes. I'll introduce you to her sometime. But let's get back to business. Wayna, how do we use the stone? As you probably know, your intended destination is completely different from the real world. The Night Kingdom is like a river flowing with concepts. And the ancient name you seek is like a tiny fish swimming downstream. In that sense, the stone is like a fishing boat drifting down the river. But the boat alone isn't enough. You need a fisherman experienced enough to steer it in the right direction. We couldn't do that ourselves? With a little practice, I'm sure you could. You have the strength and the talent. If you want to make sure this works, though, I could recommend someone to you. Who? Vichama. A legendary warrior and scout from our tribe. He's got a keen eye and a well-honed intuition. Even his ancient name means to seek. If you're fishing for a name, you're gonna want him on the boat. Bichama? Why does that name sound familiar? He's one of Auntie Atea's hot spring buddies. I've heard stories about him. Where can we find him? Ever since Malco passed, he spends most of his time gazing out at the scenery from the clifftops. Follow the path that way, and I'm sure you'll find him. Thank you. We'll go look for him there. <sighs> Good luck. I hope everything goes well. From the clifftops. Ah! That must be him! Hello there! Are you Vichana? That's me. Did you need something? What? You're saying you can bring someone back from the Night Kingdom? How is that even possible? No, if you really think about it, anything's possible in that kind of place. But that would mean... Are you okay? You don't look so good. Hmm. Everything's fine. I'll help you, but I do have a small request. After I help you find Kachina's ancient name, I want to use the stone to look for my friends as well. Your friend? Oh, why not mention someone named Malco? Is that who you're talking about? Yes, but I'd rather not get into it if it's all the same to you. That's not a problem. We agree to your request. Yeah. Since you're helping us find Kachina's ancient name, it's only right that we return the favor. Then we're agreed. Can I have a look at the stone? Huh. I see. From what I can tell, it functions almost like an abyssal pylon. Both connect the Night Kingdom to the living world. Once the connection is established, the abyss will come surging through the opening like a predator honing in on the scent of blood. So we have to be sure not to use it in a tribal settlement. Wow, you got all that just from looking at it? I just picked up on the basics, really. I still have no idea why it works. You said someone named Sit Lali invented this. They must be a genius. I'll go find an open area and start setting things up. In the meantime, I need you to get two things for me. We'll go right away. What do you need? First, I'll need some hook ropes. Pretty much every store around here carries them, so no need to go anywhere special. 
Oh, and I need to build a net out of them. So make sure you get a good amount. Wait, are you saying you're going to use a real net to catch Kachina's ancient name? How does that work when one's tangible and one's not? By creating something tangible in our world, like a net, we can create a connection to a corresponding concept in the Night Kingdom. Basically, I'm going to use the concept of a net to catch something equally intangible. An ancient name. Oh, I see. What about the second thing you needed? Right. I need one... No, two chunks of obsidian. Once we bring the ancient names into our world, we'll need a place to store them. Normally, you can only get obsidian from the Children of Echoes. But I heard there's a traveling merchant from that tribe around here somewhere, so maybe you can try your luck there. Gotcha! All right, let's split up. See that clearing? Let's meet over there when you're done. Oh, and you can send someone with me if you want. In case you're worried, I might take the stone for myself. Mm, what do you think, Chaska? <laughs> There's no need. Lena spoke highly of you. That means you're trustworthy. <sighs> I appreciate it. Even though that doesn't mean much to me anymore. Anyway, it'll take some time to set everything up, so no need to rush. I'll see you in a bit. What an odd guy. He seems so defeated, but also really invested in the stone at the same time. I don't have any more insight than you, Paimon. Let's just focus on the preparations for now. Hang on, Kachina. We're coming for you. Oops. As in rock climbing equipment? Yes. How much for your whole stock? Oh, the whole thing? Oh, let me see. That would be 30,000 mora in total. Deal? Deal. Wait, really? What, you want me to drive down the price? We just need these as fast as possible. Thanks. Oh, uh, no problem at all. I'll even pass along some information on the house. These ropes are usually used by rock climbing enthusiasts. Uh, if you want to learn, Roke is the person you want to ask. All right, that's everything. Here you go. Now we need the obsidian. Let's go talk to the traveling merchant. <laughs>